Hello, hello, hello. This is Chris Ferdinandi from GoMakeThings.com. And I'm back today with part two of my series on building a modern web app with just vanilla web components. Um, if you missed it last time, uh, just to kind of quickly recap what we've got going on here, um, we have an app that lets users add a bunch of random items to a list, like let's say orange, banana, and apple. Um, and then it lets them pick one of those items at random to use or to work with. Uh, so apple, orange, apple, orange. Yeah, there we go, there's banana. Um, and under the hood, uh, just to take a quick look at the code, we have a um, just an empty pick at random web component or custom element. We've defined it as a web component and we are generating a unique ID for it rendering our starting form, our list, the button to pick an item, and the container that we display the chosen item in. We are grabbing some elements from the DOM, and then we're setting up some event listeners for uh, submitting our form or clicking our pick button. Uh, we're using the handle event method, which is absolutely fantastic. If you're not sure how that works or how any of this previous setup stuff works, uh, go check out the last video. You can also download the source code. Um, and then uh, when the form is submitted, we're adding items to the DOM. And when our button is clicked, we are grabbing all of those list items, shuffling them up, and picking an item at random from that shuffled list. Uh, and I also have this show status message uh, helper function here that I am using to dynamically create some uh, screen reader announceable elements and inject them into the DOM. So when you saw me add those items to the list, right? So let's add some more here, strawberry pear. So these things that show up and then disappear, it's a helper function that lets us do that. Uh, and I've also got this shuffle method here uh, that does a uh, Yates Fisher uh, shuffle algorithm or Fisher Yates uh, Nuth shuffle algorithm, uh, which is a little bit more random than just using math random. Um, uh, yeah, so that's the project. Um, today, our priorities are going to be to um, save items in the list so that the user can go away, open up the browser session, and have that list restored. We're also going to add the ability to remove items from the list or clear the entire list. And if we have time, I'd like to add the ability to customize things. So right now, this is oriented around shuffling anything. But I could imagine a world where you have this a little bit more customized. So you could, um, maybe it's to pick who, who's paying for dinner that night, right? And so you might wanna change the label to add a name and the button to add name and pick an item. You might want that to say pick a person, right? Um, so just being able to change different things if we have the ability to, um, if we have time allows, I'm gonna show you how to set that up with a web component as well, because it's a big, powerful part of how web components work. You can do all of that declaratively in the HTML. It makes it really nice to work with. Um, really quick before we dive into it, if this is the kind of thing that you find interesting, you wanna learn how to do more of it, you wanna work on projects like this on your own, um, the Lean Web Club over at leanwebclub.com is the absolute best place to do that. Uh, it is a collection of coaching courses and coding resources to help people learn how to build simpler, more resilient front ends, um, websites, web apps. Um, and so uh, right now I am running a summer of learning sale. If you join today, you get a whole month for free. And then after that, your first three months, you get for 30% off. If you sign up for a whole year, you get that whole year for 30% off. If you sign up for a lifetime membership, that whole thing is 30% off. So uh, the longer you go, the more you save. Um, if you've never seen the Lean Web Club, it's pretty cool. Uh, every couple of weeks, I run video office hours on Google Meet uh, where you can literally just join a session with me and a bunch of other folks live. We talk about tech. Uh, we talk about sometimes pop culture stuff if time allows, um, but it's a really cool community. Um, I also have every single course I've ever made in here. So all of my workshops, I'm actually working on a new one on web components right now. I also have a bunch of short focused guides on a bunch of topics like service workers, ES modules, DOM manipulation, and so on. Um, and then a suite of projects that you can build and work from. Um, all of these also include a bunch of projects, but if you wanna just do more projects without 
the coursework. We got those too, um, as well as some of my more popular talks that I've given. So if you just want to kind of watch and learn, I've got those in here too. Uh, and then, as I mentioned, there's a ton of resources. So I have a massive, massive reference guide that includes tutorials on how to do a bunch of things. So for example, I always forget how the array sort method works. So one of my favorite things to do is to come here and look at this tutorial and it actually walks through how you can do a custom sort. So the default sort alphabetically, no problem. You just run the method. But if you want to do something where you sort by custom criteria, this breaks down how to do that. It's got the source code so I can download it and play with it. But I've got these for just like so many different things, JavaScript topics, tooling, career resources. Um, and then my personal favorite, the toolkit. Uh, this is where I have a bunch of boilerplate that you can copy, paste, and run with in your project. So literally boilerplates, I use the web component one all the time. Uh, I've actually got some web components you can just grab and go for your projects. Um, some CSS utility classes and components helper functions, and a whole bunch of recommended hand-picked libraries that I actually use on projects that I build. Um, so all worth checking out. Um, head over to leanwebclub.com if you want to learn more about that. All right, enough with all that. Um, let me actually jump into the video because I've been talking a lot. So sorry. So uh, the first thing we're going to do, let's start fresh. Um, let's talk about how to save items. And to talk about this, I actually want to bring up one of the questions that came up in the comments to the last video. Um, so one of the things I got asked is why I am, uh, when I go to kind of manage everything, why I am grabbing the list items from the DOM and turning them into an array and shuffling that instead of just saving the items that the user adds as an array in the first place. And I totally could do that. Um, so if you've ever worked with like a state-based UI library like React, that's often how it works. You get the data, you store it in some sort of JavaScript object, and you translate it into HTML later. The reason I'm not doing that um, is I had two reasons. One, I didn't plan this project out. I just started building it. Um, so theoretically, you could argue that might be an optimization you might make later. But thinking about it more, I actually don't think it is an optimization that I would make. Uh, the reason being, I think it adds more complexity, more points of failure, and actually makes the script harder to write and manage. So for example, let's say I had some sort of this items property, um, right? So I could say let items equal, I wouldn't even need to do this, but let's just for ease, let's just say, you know, I'm grabbing the items property and it's in array it's an array that looks like um you know it looks something like like this like apple orange whatever right it's got some it's got some items in it um and i shuffle and i inject so that that all works fine let me get this out of here because if i don't i'll forget it and then the script will stop working and i won't know why where that gets more problematic is here so in my on submit in addition to creating the element I also need to, um, you know, I need to have some this items thing where I'm pushing the field value into. That part's easy enough, right? So uh, we could say add the item to the array. Where it gets trickier is once we start adding some of this other stuff we want to do. So if I want to remove an item, now I need to both update the DOM and update my array. If I want to clear the list, I need to clear the DOM and clear the array. Um, so every additional feature that I want to add means there's now multiple places where I need to make updates, not just the DOM, which we're always going to need to touch, but also this other JavaScript object. And so for me, using the DOM as the place where the state is stored, since it's going to be there anyways, is actually the simpler, more resilient way to do this than also having some sort of JavaScript object or array that I need to keep in sync with the UI. Um, so when I talk about authoring web components and working with the grain of the web, this is often the kind of thing that I really mean, is that I like to work with the grain of the web, I like to work with the materials I already have, rather than trying to be clever and reinvent the wheel. Um, so with that out of the way, let's tackle how I would actually save items into the DOM. Um, so we need to think about this because we actually are going to need to grab an array. 
um, at one point or another, we are going to need to convert this data into an array. So um, let's do this. What I'm going to do is uh, we're going to create a new function here. So we're going to say um, get items. This is going to be this is going to be the method, um, and this will um, get the uh, get the items from the. Uh, what do I want to say this. Get the items from from the list. Uh, I, I'm really fumbling with words this morning. Sorry. Uh, let's um, let's get um, get an array of user added items. It's going to return an array the items, and this bit right here. We're going to take this, and we are going to we're going to return it out. So we can say um, let items equal this get items. Cool. So the reason I'm doing this, we're going to use this again. Uh, so let's go ahead and inside our on submit. So we're doing our updating and then uh, we are going to, um, let's say save, uh, save our list to local storage. So this save items here we go um let's see uh and actually do i want to we may rename this in a minute but let's let's do this for now so we've got we've got save items get items okay so save items uh so what we're going to do here um I promise this will all make sense in a second. So we are going to, um, uh, we're going to say local storage. It's been so long since I've worked with local storage. Let me just real quick, local storage. Here we go. I'm pretty sure it's set item. I just want to make sure I don't screw that up. Yeah, set item, key and data. Okay, cool. So local storage, set item. Uh, and what we are going to do is we are going to JSON stringify this get let me write this here let me write this in a way that uh is easier to to read so we're going to do this so this get items so what i'm doing here i'm grabbing that array of content from the dom and i am converting it into a string we're going to use it uh, as our data in local storage so every time we add an item to our list, we're going to turn it into an array, save it in local storage. Um, so, and this will be useful. We can, we can tap into this later. So what I'm going to do is uh, we'll call it pick at random dash, um, and then this UUID, because we may have more than one of these on the page. Uh, no, this won't work because when we go to load it later, we might have more than one set of options. We'll, we'll deal with this later. Right now, we're just going to call it pick at random. Um, when we get into customizations and stuff, we will, we will figure out a way to, to deal with this. Um, all right. So for now... So the problem, just in case you're wondering, my concern is that we could have multiple pick at random elements, right? So you could have, you have these. How do we distinguish each of the different, uh, each of the different ones, um, and like map which one goes where? Um, so I will, I will figure that out. That is not a problem to deal with just yet uh we may want to i have an idea on that we'll we'll get to it in a minute um so uh we will we will do this uh so then we're going to we're going to save the items so here we go we're going to write uh save items to local storage and this returns nothing so if we jump back over here uh, and let's look at 
uh, where is this? This is under application local storage. Let me make this a little smaller because that is comically big. So we're going to go orange, apple, banana, um, and pear. Cool. So now we've got, we've got this array saved in local storage for pick at random. Um, and, um, I'm going to have to figure out a way eventually to associate this with, with that. Um, we'll probably want to give it some sort of local storage key. Uh, but we'll, we'll sort that out later. Um, so if I reload this, the list is empty right now, but we still have our value in local storage. So what we're going to do is we're going to say load items. And this is where we will um, load saved list from local storage. And we're going to say uh, let items equals, and then we will JSON parse local storage get item pick at random. Uh, if no items return, otherwise we are going to generate a list of items. So let's look at what we're doing for that on submit. Cool. So there's an easier way to do this for right now. Um, hmm. How do I want to do this? Um, okay. I'm going to do this a less than optimal way right now. Um, you can see this app is starting to get a little bit bigger. That's totally cool. Um, so we are going to, we're going to do this. We're going to, because this is going to change. So as we get into removing items, the way this, um, the way this works is going to, like there's going to be more stuff that goes with the list item. So let's go ahead and um, we're going to create a function for that too, right? So create list item. Uh, let's see. So we will do, we will do this. Create list item. Uh, we actually, um, so we're going to call this, we'll call it text. Uh, let me, let me save the, oh yeah, I got it right there. Okay, cool. So this equals text. So we will say um, param string uh, the text to add to the item. We're not returning anything. We're just appending it. Um, cool. So we're going to do that. And then up here, we will we'll say this create list item. We can pass that in. Okay, um, so that should work. So now what we can do is inside our load items, uh, we can say for let item of items, uh, and then we are going to this create list item item. Okay, so this should get all of our items from local storage, convert it back into an array, and then if there is actually an array of items, we're going to loop through them and inject them into the DOM. This is not the most efficient because I'm looping through each item and creating them over and over again. Uh, so it could potentially trigger, depending on how large this list is, it could potentially trigger a ton of re-renders. I'm not going to get into optimization just yet. That's something I will do later. Um, but... Uh, let's go back to our constructor when we set everything up. Uh, let's go ahead and load list from local storage. Uh, and so we are going to, we'll say this, load items. And we will reload. And now you can see our list from local storage automatically gets entered into the DOM. Perfect exactly what we want. Um, awesome. So we can actually, we can check that part off the list. 
we've saved the items. Uh, next is going to be removing an item. So let's go ahead and uh, figure out a way to do that. So inside our create item, um, so we are, we're adding, so here, let's, let's give this a little bit more documentation. So create list item. Uh, next thing we want to do is create remove button. So we are going to, we're gonna say let button equals uh, document create element button. We want this to be a button because we want it to be something that the user can uh, click on, that if someone navigates the web with a keyboard, they can get to it just by tabbing or keyboard navigation. We want it to be, um, we want it to be a button because the user can then toggle it with only a keyboard. It will announce all the appropriate semantics to a screen reader user. Um, the enter key or space bar will toggle it. Um, it will react to click events automatically if one of those things happens. So a button is the element to use just for a whole slew of reasons. We can style it to look however we want um, and we might even get into that. Uh, but so then we're gonna say button, um, button, text content let's say inner html actually for this one so we're going to go inner html equals and then i'm going to cheat we're going to go to icons bootstrap and we're going to look for a close icon here uh small one's probably good so let's download this and um let's open here show and finder okay Cool. So we've got this SVG. Uh, what we are going to do, we are going to, we can remove that class. We're gonna say aria hidden equals true, and I'll show you why in a minute. Um, and we've already got fill color equals current color, which is great. So we will do this. So, uh, and then we are going to append this to our, um, to our list item. Uh, one last thing we're gonna do though, so we're gonna say button set attribute, aria label. Uh, so an aria label, uh, if it's present on an element with an appropriate role, this will get read aloud instead of whatever is in the button. Because the button is only going to have an X um, uh, in here. Actually, before we do that, let me just visually show you what this is gonna look like. Cool, so now we've got these. So if you're a, and these look hideous, so we're gonna style them, but if you're a sighted user, you look at this and you say, okay, this X goes with the, um, with the text that goes with it. So I can reasonably assume if I click this, it's going to remove that item. Um, but a screen reader user who's tabbing through the interface may not immediately get that same association. So we're gonna set an ARIA label that defines what this does. And in fact, they wouldn't necessarily know what this SVG is at all. Uh, so what we're going to say is we will go remove um, and then we will pass in the name of the item. So we'll just pass in the text. Uh, and so now if we look here, remove orange, for example, or remove apple. Um, and we should probably, we should probably change this. So instead of using double quotes, we're using, we're using single, right? Actually, let's, let's skip the quotes, right? So remove, remove apple, remove orange, etc. There we go. Cool. Um, we can style this too, if we want to. So we could, um, uh, well, you know, we don't even have to add classes at this point. We can just say something like pick at random li button. Um, and then we could do something like, like let's say we don't, uh, so at a minimum, this should have a margin. Um, uh, oh yeah, we can do this now. Margin inline start. So margin inline start 0 0.5 M. There we go. So we got a little bit of spacing. Um, and then uh, maybe we don't even really want this to like look like a button the way it does now. So we might say um, like border none, background color, transparent, 
um, color inherit font inherit just so that it doesn't look well actually we don't need to because we're using an icon so we don't need to font inherit right so we could do something like that and we might even like remove the padding on it right so let's say padding padding zero uh, the one thing it does look like we need to do um, in here uh, is um, the the SVG is is a little off so let's go ahead and um, I might even tweak that directly on here right so we'll say style um, well no you know what we've got our CSS here let's just do it with CSS let's not be let's not be ridiculous so we'll go SVG uh, and we might say margin bottom uh, negative 0 0.25 M for example uh, yeah, there we go. So now it's just a little bit more in line with with the text. So that looks a little bit better. That's cool. We can leave that there. Um, and because these are buttons, I can I can tab my way through them, which is great. Uh, so now let's go ahead and actually add um, add some functionality here. So inside our on click, we've got we've got a couple of different things going on here. Um, so we are currently listening to the pick button, um, which has its own kind of attribute on it. Uh, so let's go ahead and set up, um, we're gonna say on, um, we'll go on pick button, and we're gonna create another one for on, on remove. And, uh, we will say for this one, I'm just going to copy this bit because I hate, I hate typing more than I have to. Uh, so we'll say on remove button, click and on pick button, click. Um, and this really should say handle not on because that's evident from the name. So what we're going to do, we're going to take all this. We're gonna copy it in here. And then we're just gonna add one little extra selector here. Um, so we're gonna say um, only run on, what is, what is that selector? Pick item, there we go. Uh, where'd it go? Only run on pick item button. So if uh, event target closest, and then we'll put a bang operator in front of there. So we will only run this if the thing that was clicked, the event target has or is inside an element that has the pick item attribute. So that way, if we ever added like an icon or something in there later, this will still work. We can hit return. Uh, and then what we're gonna do here is we're gonna say on pick button event and on remove event, except we need to prefix these with this because they are methods cool um excellent so and now we can we can do this right so let's say console log remove uh so one other thing i guess we want to do here then is um we are going to where to go so where we've got this pick button at event listener. We're actually just going to listen for all clicks inside our web component now. Um, this is a technique called event delegation. So let's go ahead and check out the console. So I picked orange. I picked apple. You can see right now all clicks are toggling this behavior. We can fix that. Uh, so let's in here, we're going to say um, only run on remove buttons. So if this event target closest does not match, um, we're gonna say uh, list item button and we will return. So now cannot read target. Okay, why is that? This event, yeah because I'm saying this event, and that's not right. It should just be event target. There we go. Cool. So 
This does not generate it, but clicking on these buttons does actually. Cool, so now we've, now we've limited it to just our buttons, which is great. Now we can actually do our thing. So uh, what we're gonna do, we are going to remove the list item from the DOM and we are going to update our saved items. So we've already got a method to do that. Save updated list, this, save items, and remove list item from the UI. So let li equal uh, event target closest li. Uh, if there's no list item, return. Otherwise, we can remove it. So let's try this. Boom, apple's gone, pear is gone, reload. Um, one last thing we probably want to do um, is our show status here. Uh, let's run this again and also display a message that we we removed the item, right? So um, where did my remove items thing go? Here we go. On remove. Okay, cool. Uh, so we're going to let text equal li um ooh, how do we want to do this li text content will that also include the button it will okay so um we're gonna have to do this in a slightly more creative way um so let's say get the list item we want to get the text from it uh i know the way we're going to we're gonna do this a little differently. Um, so our button, we're gonna set another attribute. Button, set attribute, uh, let's say data, um, data text, and then we are going to, we're gonna set it as, no, actually we'll do this, data remove text, awesome. So now all of our buttons have this attribute on them, data text or data remove that includes the text inside the list item. This does two things for us. So we can instead say, uh, we're gonna do this actually. We're going to let text equal event target. Nope, I gotta do this differently. So we're gonna say let button equal um, event target closest data remove. Now, the reason we have to do this first, uh, if you click on an SVG inside a button, oftentimes the, because an SVG is kind of HTML, technically it's XML, but it's also HTML. The, um, the, the elements inside the SVG will be the event target and not the button itself. So we have to get the parent button, which we're going to do with the event target closest method. Um, and I'm lazy, so let's not write button. Let's write BTN. Uh, and then we can say if there's no button, we'll return. Otherwise, um, we're going to define our text as the, uh, the data remove attributes value. We're going to save that. Uh, so then we can, we can say, um, so we're going to remove it. And then we're going to show remove message. So we'll say this. Show status, um, removed uh, text from the list. And now, uh, here we go, let's go pear, strawberry, right? So now, boom, removed banana from the list. Removed orange from the list. Uh, and in fact, I'd actually probably phrase this differently. So let's say orange has been removed from the list. Cool. It doesn't really matter. Um, just kind of showing what's possible here. Um, cool. So now we've got the ability to remove items from the list. Uh, we're always going to work from just the items that we have. Uh, you can see after you remove items, local storage is being is being updated. So we are... We are not loading anything uh, that isn't there anymore. Um, 
Cool. So we are we're in pretty good shape. I think the last thing we probably want to do is add the ability to clear the entire list. So let's go ahead and in our initial DOM here, where we've got pick an item, uh, let's go ahead and um, we're going to add another button that says, uh, make it clear list, right? And then we will say, um, uh, or remove all items. Um, and let's reload the page. Cool. So I am going to, I'm gonna style that differently. So let's go ahead and pick at random clear list. Um, so we are going to, we're gonna say font inherit. Basically we wanna make this look like the, uh, why do I say inherity, why do I keep typing that? We wanna make this look like the rest of the, uh, the UI. So border zero, um, Background color, transparent. Uh, I like to keep these roughly alphabetized, but that's okay. Padding, zero. Um, let's just see here. Or remove all items, cool. Um, so that looks good for now. So this will still be, we want it to be a button. So um, because just for semantic reasons, it's not navigating you anywhere. It's toggling behavior on the page. Um, so clicking it right now does nothing. Um, we need to handle this use case. Actually, you picked undefined. So um, let's actually, we didn't catch that last time, but on pick, um, so we're going to say if no items return. Cool. If no items length return. There we go. Cool. So when there's no items to pick, that button won't do anything. We can avoid that. You picked undefined uh, option because that would be awkward. Um, cool. Okay, so uh, let's go with, we're gonna this on clear list event. So we're gonna follow the same pattern here, right? So we will say on clear list, we'll accept the event. There we go, clear the list of items. Uh, and again, let's just copy paste because I'm feeling lazy. Uh, and so we're going to do the same thing here, right? So only run on clear list, um, clear list button. So, um, if event target closest, um, I am having a tough time typing today, clear list return. Okay, so if what we're doing here, if the event target doesn't have our clear list method, we're gonna do nothing. Otherwise, for now, let's just say clear the list, reload. Cool, so clicking, clicking anywhere in here does nothing. We need to catch this too. So um, on, where do we go? on submit, right? Um, on submit. So if there's no item to add, bail. So if this field value length return, remove it. Cool. All right. So now we don't add items if there's no value. Um, catching bugs. Awesome. Testing, good thing to do. Um, let's see here, where was I? On clear list, okay. So clear the list, we're getting logged. So let's add some items, right? So we're gonna go orange, strawberry, apple, pear. Sweet, so we've got our items in the list, they reload. Um, we are going to, let's first confirm that the user wants to do it. Uh, so double check the user actually wants to do this. Um, so we're going to say let confirm equals, um, and then we're going to use the just the browser native confirm prompt. Are you sure you want to do this? It cannot be undone. Uh, and then 
we will say if no confirm return otherwise let's console log yep do it just so that we know this is working properly so anytime you do some sort of big destructive user interface thing you're going to want to double check that the user actually wants to do it in a modern production app i would probably not use confirm at this point i would probably use dialogue but for now for a quick little youtube video um i think this is a a great and simple way to do it so let's let's reload let's click uh cannot access confirm before initialization all right let's see what's going on here um ndm confirm confirm message uh, if window confirm, blah, blah, blah. okay. So what am I doing here? Oh, because I'm defining confirm. I'm re. I'm trying to redefine confirm. That's the problem. So uh, let's say if uh, we'll call this do clear. Let's try that again. So the problem was just if I didn't properly articulate that. The method is named confirmed by defining a variable called confirm. I'm overriding or redefining that method in the browser and creating kind of this circular error. So there we go. Are you sure you want to do this? It cannot be undone. If I hit cancel, nothing happens. If I hit okay, we move forward in our script. Um, so nice and simple, easy peasy. Okay, cool. So um, next up, I'm gonna open this in a new tab just so I can scroll up and be in two places. This list, okay. So uh, let's clear clear the list. So we're gonna say this list, right? That's what it is, this list. Yep, inner HTML equals, so we're just gonna wipe that list completely out. And uh, where we've got save items, we're gonna do this. So we're gonna add one more called remove items, remove items from local storage, local storage, remove item, pick at random. So that's just gonna wipe that whole list out. So let's reload. We'll pull up local storage as well so you can see it. So we're gonna do this. Yes, DOM gets wiped out. This item is still there because I didn't load it or I didn't actually like run that method. So let's, let's try that again. Uh, apparently if you don't do things, they don't happen. Uh, remove items from local storage. So we can say this, remove items. Okay. Yes, and they're all gone. Um, and now if I reload the page, they don't load into the DOM. Um, cool, so this feels like a good place to stop for today. The one thing we didn't get into that I really wanted to, but it's kind of time allowing, is customizations. So with a web component or with any like library or tool like this, I really want developers to be able to customize what happens in different places in the UI. So the message that gets shown, the button text, uh, any of the messaging here, even the ID that the items get saved to in local storage so that they don't override each other. Um, I want all of that to be customizable. Um, and so in our next episode, so I guess in part three, which I didn't even know I was gonna do, but in part three, um, we will cover how to do all of that. Uh, so I hope you tune in for that one. Um, in the meantime, if you liked this video, please do all the things, the liking, thumbs up, subscribe, leave a comment, um, just because it lets YouTube know that these videos rock, more people see them. I know you like them, I'll keep making more of them. If there's something you'd like to see me build, if there's something you'd like to see me teach or talk about, please leave a comment down below and let me know because that helps out a ton. And also, real quick before you jump, um, if you think you'd like to learn how to do more stuff like this, if you wanna join me for office hours so you can ask questions about how I built some of this stuff, um, consider joining the Lean Web Club. Right now, uh, I've got a huge sale going on for the summer. Head over to leanwebclub.com to learn more about that. Thanks so much, and I will see you next week. Cheers.